Welcome to First Steps to Al-Anon Recovery from Al-Anon Family Groups. The discussion in this podcast will focus on current alcoholism research and how it involves family members affected by someone's alcoholism. Here with us today is the Acting Director of the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, or the NIAAA. Dr. Kenneth Warren has been the Acting Director of the NIAAA since November 2008. He is a nationally recognized expert on the effects of alcohol on pregnancy and a longtime senior administrator at the NIAAA. The NIAAA is one of the 27 institutes and centers that comprise the National Institutes of Health, which is a part of the United States Department of Health and Human Services. The NIAAA supports and conducts research on the impact of alcohol use on human health and well-being. It is the largest funder of alcohol research in the world. Dr. Warren, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Dr. Warren, how prevalent is alcoholism in the United States? Our latest epidemiological data would indicate that there are approximately 18 million people who have an alcohol use disorder, which is classified as either alcohol dependence, perhaps better known to most people as alcoholism, or a separate disorder known as alcohol abuse. Very interesting. In Al-Anon, we say that each problem drinker affects at least three to four other people. Do you see this as a reasonable estimate? Yes, indeed, if not a greater number. A study conducted by NIAAA researchers found that one in four children grows up in a family or home where someone has an issue with alcohol. Therefore, you were talking about widespread ramifications. We continue to support research in alcohol-related harm and its impact on society. It may be helpful to compare this to the way tobacco researchers broadened our understanding by examining the effects of secondhand smoking. Scientifically, we are fine-tuning how we measure alcohol's impact, but the evidence for alcohol's position of affecting a fairly broad and large number of individuals, at least three to four other people, is very compelling. Thank you. What can you tell us about current alcoholism research and what it reveals that we didn't know 50 years ago? Well, 50 years ago, scientists knew little about the genetic basis of alcohol dependence or about the nervous system changes that occur as a result of prolonged heavy drinking. Society in general perceived alcoholism as a disease of middle age. There was only one FDA-approved medication, which is called disulfiram, which could be prescribed at that time for the treatment of alcoholism. And behavioral approaches, especially in outpatient settings, were just beginning to be developed and put into practice. For the most part, treatment was limited to intensive programs separated from mainstream medicine. Today, much has changed. Researchers have identified genes that increase an individual's risk for becoming alcohol dependent as well as genes that protect against alcohol problems. The neural basis of alcohol dependence has been clarified. Research has shown that drinking is influenced by multiple neurotransmitter systems, by neuromodulators, by hormones, and by intracellular networks. In addition to disulfiram, today we have other medications that are also available for the treatment of alcohol dependence, including naltrexone and acomprosate. Today, clinicians have a wide range of treatment options that can be tailored to patient-specific needs and a broad array of drinking problems that can be effectively treated by non-specialists. When used in conjunction with behavioral therapies, medications prove the chance for recovery for alcohol dependence. We now know that several behavioral approaches, such as motivational enhancement therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and 12-step facilitation, are effective in treating alcohol dependence, offering choices for both the patient and the therapist as well. Today, we have screening and brief intervention, which has recently emerged as an effective strategy for addressing high-risk drinking. It sounds like we've really come a long way. What kind of research does the NIAAA conduct on the effects of someone's alcoholism on family members and friends? 
That's a very good question. We do indeed support researchers who investigate the consequences of harmful drinking for the family members and friends of someone who has alcoholism. The consequences include high levels of psychological stress from interacting with the alcoholic person, disruption of family life due to job losses and neglect of responsibilities, financial problems, and unpredictable and sometimes violent behavior. NAAA has always had a vigorous portfolio on these issues. For example, one of the main research components of our center grant at the Prevention Research Center focuses on alcohol's contribution toward child abuse and neglect. That's fantastic. There have long been misconceptions about the causes and treatment of alcoholism. In Al-Anon, we refer to alcoholism as a disease rather than as a moral failing. Does NIAAA classify alcoholism as a disease? Yes, indeed, it is a disease, one that has long been recognized by the American Medical Association and the American Psychiatric Association. Furthermore, like other diseases, alcoholism can be treated. We use behavioral as well as pharmacological approaches or a combination of them. Yet we know that stigma still exists and that many people still think alcoholism is not a treatable disease. Indeed, studies show that only one in four persons with an alcohol use disorder receives treatment. We appreciate that Al-Anon and similar organizations can help change the very damaging misperceptions about alcohol use disorders. Like Al-Anon, NAAA wants to increase awareness that alcoholism is a treatable medical condition. Very good. In Al-Anon, a person's alcoholism is also referred to as a family disease because of its effects on family and friends. Do you believe this classification to be credible? While NAAA doesn't specifically refer to alcoholism as a family disease, we do recognize that alcohol problems don't just hurt the drinker. The American Psychiatric Association diagnosis of alcoholism centers on the person with the drinking problem, yet it also recognizes the potential for serious secondhand effects on the people who are closest to the drinkers. Spouses and children of heavy drinkers may face serious problems as a result of a family member's alcoholism. These include exposure to psychological or even physical abuse, as well as financial problems caused by the drinking that can strain family relationships. As part of the diagnostic process, clinicians ask patients if drinking has interfered with their ability to fulfill major role obligations at home, at work, or in the school setting. Clinicians also ask if they have continued drinking despite persistent or recurrent social or interpersonal problems that it may cause, for example, arguments with their spouse. What are the Institute's plans for future research on the issue of the effects of a person's alcoholism on others? This remains an important area of research for NIAAA, one that is investigated by researchers who seek to better understand and measure the consequences of alcohol use disorders. In addition to our own surveys and the researchers whom we support, NIAAA will continue to partner with the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and other organizations that are working in this important field of research. We also hope to foster relationships with Al-Anon and other private nonprofit groups on outreach efforts that can improve the health of all Americans. Thank you for talking to us about current alcoholism research and how it involves family members affected by someone's alcoholism. And thank you, everyone, for listening to First Steps to Al-Anon Recovery. You're welcome to listen to any of the Al-Anon Family Group's podcasts at www.alanon.org. You are also welcome to attend a face-to-face meeting of Al-Anon Family Groups in your own community by clicking on How to Find a Meeting or by calling one 888 al anon Thank you for listening to First Steps to Al-Anon Recovery from Al-Anon Family Groups.